So the first thing that anyone should consider buying for a car that hasn't run in like 10 years and doesn't have an interior and doesn't have tires and doesn't have all of the wheels on it properly. And the engine might be locked up. The engine might be locked up, doesn't have a transmission. First thing you need to buy is a turbo. It's a 3582 from Force Performance. Been looking forward to opening this, so we're going to open it up and see what's inside. Yeah, so Force Performance, they had a pretty good sale the other day, uh, and you really couldn't resist their FP3582. Um, I feel like that's going to be a pretty good turbo on a 3.4 liter stroker engine. Uh, Brent's actually getting the old short block out of my car, so it's going to be plain strong, and I think 600 to the wheels should be plenty easy on this and still have pretty good spool, um, and you just really couldn't beat the price. I mean, I think it was like $500, $550. And uh, this isn't just some, you know, turbo off of eBay or Amazon or something like that. Uh, Force Performance actually goes through these turbos and makes sure they're all good and things like that, so you can trust, trust these type of things. So um, we'd normally be huge Garrett fans and things like that, but the whole idea behind this car is really sticking to a budget, and we know that you guys want to see, you know, really high end stuff like the GTX 35 76s on the White Stealth, but you probably also want to see stuff that. Um, you know, you can afford where this is just a complete hobby car. Uh, you're just, you know, saving money from your part-time job or your side hustle to pay for it. And I think this is really going to fit the bill. Uh, again, it's about a 60, 70 pound an hour turbo. Uh, maybe a little more than that, depending. Um, honestly, I didn't do the compressor map on this one. Force Performance doesn't uh, show compressor maps. But if you assume that it's pretty close to a Garrett GT3582, um, I think it's going to be a really good fit for a 3 liter or 3.4 liter and uh, he's going to be running you know, a lot of pump gas where he's going uh, but we will be getting the car on E85 too and so that will let us you know, really crank that up and we have a single turbo kit that was custom built at one point and I think it's actually built around a T4 platform and so we're just going to put a, a T3 flange on it to go with that. Um, it would be kind of ideal probably to run a divided T4 housing which would mean you know one bank would go on each divided side of that housing um, but the manifold kit's just not set up for it and that's just not something we want to kind of t tackle right now so this is a T3 based turbo and you know Force Performance does a great job packing things they, they know as well as anybody stuff can get wet so it looks like they packed this up in plastic what do we got in the box Brent? <laughs> what a beauty <laughs> what a beauty Nice. Mm -hmm. It's kind of my opinion that if you're going to go to a single turbo, you know, radically alter the exhaust configuration on the car, this is probably, you know, as small as I would go, honestly. Um, so is it going to make huge power at 3,000 RPM? Probably not. Um, I think it's probably going to come alive in the mid 4,000s type of situation, uh, which should allow us to make plenty of power and be kind of easy on the engine and so on and so forth. Um, this does have a 0.82 AR exhaust housing, which is funny. This turbo is just slightly bigger than one of the turbos on the white car. So this has got a um, 82 millimeter exducer on the compressor. Um, I think it's 60, 62 on the inducer. It's a 62 or a 66. I can't remember, but it's a, it's a little bit bigger than one of the 76 millimeter exducer compressors on a white car. So. Um, I think it should do really well. So what, what do we got here? We got a you know billet GTX style compressor wheel here. Um, it looks like we have a speed sensor port if you want to run that. Um, it looks like it's going to be pretty compact. Uh, so this will let us kind of, the kit that he has kind of puts it up over there like by where that main fuse box is. So on his car we're going to take the new stock wiring around to kind of get that in there. Which is kind of maybe nice because it's going to put some of that turbo heat kind of up in the corner there which I kind of like um, but yeah I mean seems like an awesome unit um, it's got you know all your compressor clamps and all your uh, fittings are protected stuff like that um, what do you think she's gonna make her go she's gonna make her go she's gonna make her go <laughs> so you've never um, until you guys diesel truck you've never had a turbo on a gas car nope. right nope and ironically I think this isn't that much different than the turbo on your diesel truck yeah uh 
almost consider just trying to cheat and get a turbo for a diesel yeah. truck. But you, you probably know. have to get a different exhaust housing because yeah. they're probably huge. <laughs> but um, I think the one on your truck, some kind of GT37. So I don't yeah. think it's that far off from this situation here. But really looks beautifully machined, and um, this is ball bearing. So. Hopefully we get some good spool characteristics. Uh, Brent is going to be running a revenge built, of course, six speed. And so we're not putting an auto in this car, so he does need to be able to re-spool rapidly. And, um, you know, that's kind of why we didn't go with like a 40 series frame. And, um, you know, you guys that really think about your budgets, uh, you got to overall look at the picture, including maintenance. And so it's a lot more affordable to build a 600 horsepower car than try, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred. Uh, because you know you start getting up in that power level you're not just building it once you know it's gonna be a lot of maintenance and things like that and so Brent wanted more like something you could get in hit the key um, and I kind of surprised him with this turbo this might be bigger than what he would have got but it, again it was such a good price yeah. that I figured that it was a great place to start uh, you know no big loss if it's not a perfect fit uh, we'll figure something else out but I think it's gonna be really cool yeah I think it's gonna be pretty awesome shouldn't be too laggy should, I mean, I, I really, good, I, think. I know by 5,000, the party's going to be going good, but I think four and a half, you're going to be going pretty good. Uh, and this also has, you know, anti-surge um, situation there, so that should sound pretty cool. And that should also give us some room on the left side of the compressor map. Um, I think that's a, a three-inch inlet, or is that a four-inch inlet? That might be a four-inch inlet. That's a four. Yep. Yeah. Looks like it comes with some fittings. Um, that's a restrictor. So your ball bearing turbo, they usually got a you know 30 or 40 thousandths of an inch restrictor on it because uh, the ball bearing uh, cartridge in here doesn't require near as much oil flow. And if you actually don't restrict it, sometimes you can get some smoking out the exhaust. Um, kind of a side note, didn't mean to get technical, but uh, a lot of your smoking in your turbos is not really a bad turbo. Um, there's not like you know rubbery seals in there like you might think. It's like this labyrinth seal. Um, our ball bearing cartridges are a little different yet. But a lot of times it's either oil supply or drain issues, and you could be having too much supply or not enough drain. And so you cannot go too big on the drain, but your drain always has to go downhill. Um, it's a lot like you know putting in a drain in your sink in your house. If you've got any places that go up, it's not going to flow, and you're going to have a lot of backing up. Once that oil backs up, it's really got no place to go, but you know, and with the wheels and the exhaust and the compressor side, it can kind of go either way. But you can't have too much feed. Uh, that's why we got this restrictor here, um, so you don't overwhelm, you know, the, the cartridge in here and get oil kind of coming out of both sides. So that's always the first thing I would check if you have an issue with your turbo smoking, uh, especially if it's a new build. You know, make sure your turns are good and clear. Uh, a lot of times when we're starting a car for the first time, I take the returns off, and when we're cranking it over to get oil pressure, you should get a stream of oil out of the return, you know, within 30, 45 seconds of cranking sort of thing. Uh, if you use one of the Melling pre-lubers that we recommend, um, you'll start seeing it come out of the turbo return too when you start pre-lubing that engine before you fire it up. So you just want to make sure all that stuff's good. Um, I believe these are water-cooled as well. So what you're going to have is your drain. Um, and this is, oddly enough, it's about the size of a stock one. Your Garrett ones and your Mitsubishi uh, two flange here is not that different. Uh, so that's kind of your drain. And then you're going to have your water ports on both sides. I don't know if we'll run them or not. Um, these turbos can usually live without them. Although a ball bearing turbo prefers water because it uh, doesn't have as much oil flow. So you don't have as much oil cooling. Um, but it is more work and things like that. And we'll kind of see. This thing's affordable enough that, you know, if it went a couple of years and has a slightly reduced lifespan from not water cooling it, you know, I wouldn't get that excited about it. Uh, but you can run them kind of in and out. Here and there, and <laughs> you also have your old feet up top, and so that's what these uh, fittings here are for. Um, not sure why there's two. I have to ask those guys if they're different sizes, because to the naked eye, this left one here looks a little bit smaller. So I would suspect you start with the big one, and if you got a little bit of smoking problems, kind of move your way down, because uh, it's easier than starving the turbo oil and ruining the cartridge. So yeah, uh, Forced Performance no way sponsors us, but we're glad that they're helping us get some revenge on his car that used to not have turbos at all. Absolutely. <laughs> super excited. I may, not, I may not show it, but I'm super excited. Well, it's been a long, hot day, so yeah. we've been trying out our new media blaster and things today and moving things around the shop, and so 
thought this would be a good way to end the day here. Well, um, if you need a turbo, Force Performance is always a good option. Um, we do also offer Garrett on our site if you want to go with some Garrett items. Uh, just let us know or if there's any other thing we can sell you like um, fuel injectors, fuel injector clinic, injector dynamics. We carry all the top brands and let us know if we can get some revenge on your ride.